In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of vectors. So let's talk about some of the algebraic properties required um, to operate uh, with vector addition. So the first one, we'll call one, is the closure property. Closure. So this says if you have two vectors in Rn, then the sum is an Rn. So it's pretty simple. So it says if you have x and y in Rn, then vector x plus y is in Rn. So x plus y. And instead of saying in, I'm going to use this notation here. This means is in or belongs to the set Rn. So if you have two vectors in Rn, then the sum is in Rn. Remember, to add vectors, you simply um, add the components, right? You add the components. Two. Two. The commutative property. So commutative. Commutative. Property. This follows directly from the commutivity of the components. So it basically says that, uh, let me use fancier notation here. So for all, let's, let's change it up. The upside down A means for all in mathematics. So for all vectors x, y, and rn, we have that x plus uh, y is equal to uh, y uh, plus x. So this follows immediately from the commutivity of the components. Uh, three, the associative property. So associative, associative property. of vector addition. So this says that for all vectors x, y, and z in Rn, if you take the vector um, x plus y, so if you add x and y, and then you add z to it, that's the same thing as first adding y and z and then adding x to it, right? So uh, the associative property of vector addition. This follows directly from the associative property of uh, real numbers, right? So it's a direct, uh, it's a direct consequence. Maybe we should prove it really quickly. Uh, just a terse proof. So check it out. So proof. So for all x, y, z and Rn, we have, let's look at x plus y plus z. So I'm just going to be a little bit terse here. So I said terse, and I'm going to assume that x has the components x1, x2, x3, etc. y has the components y1, y2, y3, etc. And z has the components z1, z2, z3, etc. So the vector x plus y, well, we know uh, by definition of vector addition, that's x1 plus y1, we defined this earlier in a previous video, dot, 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 xn plus yn, right? And then we have plus, and then we have our vector z that has components z1, dot, 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 zn. I'm, I'm glad we're doing this. I almost didn't do it, and I think this is, this is somewhat enlightening if you've never seen this. Now we have to add these. So using the definition of vector addition again, right, this is going to be x1 plus y1, and then plus z1. Notice the parentheses, right? Very, very key, dot, dot, dot. And then xn plus yn plus zn, right, plus zn. And now we can use associativity uh, of the real numbers. So this is, this is by associativity, this step here. Normally you would write it in a proof, so I'll just put by, by ASS. So using associativity on each of the components, we would get x1 plus, and then parentheses, y1 plus z1, dot, 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 and then, and then x sub n plus parentheses, y sub n plus z sub n parentheses. Should have extended my little bar here. Okay, and then using the definition of vector addition, this becomes 
this is simply going to become um, this here, x1 dot 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 xn plus. And then here we have this other vector, y1 plus z1. Now we can drop the parentheses. They're not really necessary, right? So dot dot dot. They're still there, but you don't have to write them anymore. And this first vector here is the vector x, right? This is the vector x. And the second vector here is the vector y plus z, by definition of vector addition. So we have that, let me scroll up so you see it. We have that x plus y plus z is equal to x plus y plus z. So uh, that's true for all x, y, z. So we've shown uh, associativity. So worth, worth going through that uh, proof. So that was property three. So property four, property four, uh, is the existence of something called the additive identity. So additive identity. So identity. Additive identity. So there is a vector. This basically says there is a vector. There is a vector which we call zero. And we put a, a, an arrow above it. Okay, this is called the zero vector. This resides in Rn such that, st, I means such that, uh, x plus 0 equals x. And so what could this vector possibly be? Um, well, it's the vector where every component uh, is 0. So note, the 0 vector is defined to be the vector where every entry is 0. Right, every single entry is zero. It's called the zero vector, right? This is called the zero vector. And five uh, is the existence of an additive inverse. So additive inverse. Additive inverse. So given, given a vector x in Rn, there is negative x in Rn. There's a vector which we'll call negative x in Rn, such that uh, if you do x plus negative x, you get the zero vector. So what could this vector be? Uh, we'll define it as follows. So given, so given a vector x with components x1 through xn, we will define a negative x or minus x or the opposite of x. Basically, we'll put negative signs in front of all of the components. You might say, oh, you're just multiplying by negative 1. That's correct, but we haven't talked about that yet, right? Technically, um, if you're doing everything correctly, we haven't talked about this operation, you know, putting a negative in front of the x. Um, so we'll talk about that later. It's called scalar multiplication, basically multiplying a number times a vector. So uh, we're almost there. So if you add these up, uh, you do you do get uh, you do get zero, right? So uh, because you add the entries, right? X one minus plus minus x one gives you zero, so it does give you uh, the zero the zero vector. Um, so those are the properties uh, for vector addition. Um, I'm going to stop the video here, and we'll continue with a really cool uh, example uh, in the plane. That's it.